If you're looking to break away from the Adobe subscription model, or maybe you're just looking for a handy all-in-one design tool, then you'd be hard-pressed to find a better alternative than Affinity Designer. In this video, I'll be giving you a complete rundown of what exactly Affinity Designer is so you can decide if it's the right design tool for you. Affinity Designer is a graphic design app that allows you to work in both vector and pixel-based environments. This is special because most design apps are built around one or the other. For example, if you're an Adobe user, you'll need Illustrator to work with vectors and Photoshop to work with pixel-based images. So if you're working on a project and need a little of both, you'll have to switch back and forth between the two applications. Affinity Designer, on the other hand, combines the best of both worlds in one convenient app. And for those who may not be aware, vector graphics are based on coordinate points that are placed on an X and Y axis, whereas pixels are tiny little colored boxes that make up an image. Vector graphics are used to make things like logos, icons, and avatars. The benefit of working with vectors is that they can be scaled up infinitely without quality loss. The pixel environment is meant for editing photos or any other type of pixel-based imagery. And unlike vector graphics, pixels allow you to apply fine details that are otherwise not possible or practical in a vector environment. So let's say you wanted to remove the background from an image and then use it to design a header. You could use the selection tools in the pixel persona to remove the image's background and then move it over to the designer persona to continue working on it in vectors. This is a workflow that requires multiple applications if you're an Adobe user, but just one if you're using Affinity Designer. Not only is Affinity Designer a handy and convenient desktop app, but it also has a mobile app for the iPad that is just as good as the desktop version and contains all of the features. In my example here, I was able to create the thumbnail design for this video in the desktop version of the app. Then I was able to save it and open it up in my iPad so that I can continue working on it. This can be really convenient if you're tired of sitting at your desk and want a change of scenery, or if you simply don't feel like lugging your laptop around with you when you're on the go. So let's do a brief overview of what exactly you're looking at when you launch Affinity Designer and open a new document for the first time. The first thing to pay attention to, up here in the top left corner of the screen, are the personas. This is what allows you to choose between vector and pixel working environments. The designer persona represents the vector environment, whereas the pixel persona is where you would go to edit pixel-based images. As you toggle between these two personas, you'll notice a change in the tools on the left-hand side of your screen. The designer persona provides you with more vector-based tools that allow you to create various shapes and objects, whereas the pixel persona has common image editing tools like marquee selections and various paintbrushes. At the top of the screen, you'll see a row of system tools for common functions like aligning and distributing objects, snapping controls, and Boolean operations. Just below that row are the tool settings for whichever tool you currently have enabled, just like in Illustrator and many other design apps. On the right-hand side of your screen, you'll see various menus that allow you to change the appearance and properties of the objects on your canvas. The Fill menu can be used to apply colors and gradients to selected objects, and the Stroke menu can be used to apply outlines that are otherwise known as strokes. Just beneath that, you will see the Layers menu, which allows you to organize all of the objects on your canvas, dictate their stacking order, and apply various layer effects and distortions. The Brushes menu allows you to pick a brush style to paint with, and Quick Effects are a way of quickly applying simple effects that are otherwise tedious when created manually. For example, you could use Quick Effects to apply an outline to a selected object and then apply a drop shadow. Best of all, these effects are non-destructive and can be toggled off at any time. So let's open up a new document and do a little bit of exploration. I'm going to navigate to File and select New. From the menu, click on the Sample option in the bottom left corner. You should see a collection of pre-made designs that you can open and play around with. For this demonstration, I'm going to choose Plushy Summoners by Frankentune and click Open. Once opened, you can click around on your canvas to see all of the individual elements that make up the design. You can see their stacking order in the Layers menu, and you could even change their color and other properties using the menus above. Affinity Designer is one of the most powerful design tools around, and this video hasn't even begun to scratch the surface of what's possible. If you'd like to learn more about how to use this handy tool to create things like logos and t-shirt designs, then check out some of the tutorials on this channel. 
If you're already an Illustrator or Inkscape user, then you should have no problem finding your way around the software. And if you want a more thorough understanding of how everything works, then be sure to check out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where I go over every tool and feature in the software to explain what it is and demonstrate how it works. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me whenever you need it. Check the link in the description of the video to learn more. And as always, thanks for watching.